Have you done any tests to see whether people who claim to be religious are more likely to be honest as compared to atheists and people who disclaim religion? <coughs> yeah. Oh, I wish we had an hour. So uh, there's a actually, okay. there's a story in the Bible that God comes to Sarah and said, Sarah, you're going to have a son. And Sarah laughs. And she said, how can I have a son when my husband is so old? God said, don't worry. Then God goes to Abraham and said, Abraham, you're going to have a son. And Abraham says, did you tell Sarah? <laughs> and God said, yes. This is my you know, reenactment of the Bible. It's not <laughs> exactly like this. Um, and, and Abraham said, and what did Sarah say? And God said, Sarah said, how could you have a son when she is so old? And the religious scholars have wondered, how could God lie? And the conclusion is that it's OK to lie for peace at home. <laughs> Shalom Bayit in Hebrew. And, and, and if you think about it, I talked to um, quite a few religious leaders about this. And, and one of their realization is that there are many human values. Honesty is one of them. But human values happen to collide from time to time. Not all human values are compatible all the time. And what do you do when they collide? So that's kind of something that religion has, there's some thoughts at least uh, about that. The other thing I'll tell you about, about religion, <clears throat> we've done some experiments on this. The, the lead to the experiment was the following. There's a little joke. A guy goes to the rabbi and he said, Rabbi, you wouldn't believe what happened. Somebody stole my bicycle from synagogue. And the rabbi is appalled. Is somebody stealing your bicycle from synagogue? This is terrible. This is awful. I can't believe this is happening. Here is what you do. Come to synagogue next week and sit in the front row. And as we go over the Ten Commandments, turn around and look at everybody in the eyes. And when we get to thou shall not steal, see who can't look you straight in the eyes, you'll know that's your thief. <laughs> the guy is very excited, comes to synagogue, sits in the front row, turns around, you Ten Commandments. At the end of the services, he goes to the rabbi. He said, Rabbi, you wouldn't believe it. It worked like magic. It worked like a charm. The moment, the moment we got to thou shall not commit adultery, <laughs> I remembered where I left my bike. <laughs> <laughs> now, where is the experiment? Um, we, went, we went to UCLA. And we asked 500 undergrads to try and recall the Ten Commandments. None of them could recall all Ten Commandments. They invented lots of interesting new ones. <laughs> but what happened after they just tried to recall the Ten Commandments? We tempted them to cheat in the same task I described earlier. Nobody cheated. Right? And it wasn't the people who remembered more commandments didn't cheat, and the people who can't remember any commandments, the non-religious people cheated a lot. It was across the board. In fact, even when we take self-declared atheists and we get them to swear on the Bible, they stop cheating. So if you think about religion, I think that religion has a couple of elements within it. One element is heaven and hell, right? Something in the long term. I don't think that matters. <coughs> I don't think people, I don't think we have any evidence of any human activity that is driven toward that long term. But I think that religion, do give you lots of do and don't do rules for the daily lives. And I think these rules are actually helpful. This is why I think that being spiritual is not enough. Right? I think that actually having specific rules for behavior help people regulate their approach. Mm -hmm.